So hi, everybody. My name is Grant Gooley. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're looking forward to showing you why First Choice Business Brokers is the right opportunity and why now is actually the, the best time to become a business broker. Um, if being your own boss or building a legacy, creating multi-generational wealth for your family is your goal, then we would say owning a First Choice Business Brokerage franchise is an ideal vehicle. To be successful, you need a proven system and a framework within an established franchise. It's going to give you the support to thrive. And that's why at First Choice Business Brokers, we have proven training systems and support to help our franchisees achieve their goals. So I'd like to first introduce First Choice founders, Jeff and Linda Nyman. They're I'm experts. So much, yeah. Well, <laughs> I was just going to say how, how, how much of experts you are in the industry, Linda and Jeff, with you know over 30 years of experience owning and operating uh, one of the largest offices in the United States for business brokerage. So Jeff and Linda, please take it away. Thanks so much, Grant. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. We're so excited to have you here today. Um, I'm Linda Nyman, and Jeff, you'll have to unmute yourself to introduce yourself as well. Hi, I'm Jeff Nyman. <laughs> Today's webinar is a great opportunity for you, uh, for you to hear uh, directly from all of our amazing First Choice owners. We've got a select group on today that I think that they're going to be sharing some amazing experiences with you, some of their successes, and insight into what it's like to be part of the First Choice family, and then also business brokerage. Yeah, later on, we're going to have a question and answer session afterwards, and that will give you a chance to hear first first hand excuse me about the benefits of uh, joining first choice and becoming a business broker with first choice to and learn about our systems our support and many of the rewarding opportunities our franchisees enjoy so let's start with something very basic here what is a business broker well we're going to put it very simply we help business owners find buyers for their business and we help buyers find the right business you know, business brokers are kind of known in the industries as kind of the go-to experts, right? Uh, they're yeah. they're going to be helping buyers and sellers uh, find each other. Uh, so we act as intermediaries, uh, helping the buyers and sellers connect while making the process of transitioning the business from the current owner to the buyer seamless and a lot smoother. Well, we really start by providing expert valuations to help the sellers, that's the business owners, set a fair price for their business, which, by the way, we train you how to do this with First Choice proprietary valuation tool. We then market the business uh, to attract potential buyers. And, of course, the next step is where our negotiation and facilitation skills come into play to ensure both sides get the best deal possible creating a win-win transaction. And really what we're doing through that process is keeping the entire process and the transaction and the transition between the buyer and the seller completely confidential. Yeah, but business brokers really help guide buyers and sellers really every step of the way. That's that's the goal. Um you know, you could look at it as well that, you know, our our role as a business broker is just to help entrepreneurs meet their goals. And it doesn't matter if, if they're buying or selling. That's what we're there for. We're helping them achieve their goals. By the way, we are not experts in every uh, industry. <laughs> we're really experts in valuing and selling businesses. For example, you might uh, be talking to uh, an electrical contractor. You don't have to know anything about being an electrical contractor, but we do know how to value and sell the business. And part of what uh, we like to describe ourselves as, and I know it kind of sounds a little bit strange, but is secret agents. Yeah. We work behind the scenes, completely behind the scenes with the business owners. So again, we're valuing the business, we're marketing to attract the buyers, and then we're managing that entire process through closing while keeping everything completely confidential. Uh, confidential. And that, again, is going towards that secret agent side of us. Linda, I believe that uh, you know the confidentiality is a major part of uh, being a business broker, and and really for thirty years, actually over thirty years, uh, First Choice Business Brokers has provided um, this service uh, for business owners, and now more than ever, it's really necessary. All these baby boomers retiring, it's uh, it's changing a lot. <laughs> 
Yeah, and, and you know, we talk about ourselves being secret agents behind the scenes and helping the, the entrepreneurs, uh, but we're like matchmakers at this point. We're bringing together buyers and sellers. We're we're helping the buyers find the right fit for, for themselves, and the seller cares about who they're selling their business to. So this can be an emotional process as well, and we're helping the buyers and sellers through that process. So... Uh, really, as you say, we're like we're really like matchmakers. So, what is business brokerage? Well, it's a very thriving industry, and really, it's as uh, close as you can get to uh, a business being recession-proof. So, for over thirty years now, we've seen a, a really a steady demand for business owners who are looking to sell and entrepreneurs really eager to buy. And this demand has only continued to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Again, going back to the baby boomers, it, we're just yeah. seeing so much growth going on right now. Um, and there are roughly 30 million small businesses in the U.S., but only about 4,000 full-time business brokers. And, and you heard that right, 30 million small businesses and only 4,000 yeah. full-time business brokers. Now, you compare that to, like, real estate. What is it, Jeff? 800,000 real estate agents? Eight, yes, there's 800,000. I think there's 500,000 just in California. <laughs> Man, there may be. You know, and it's an underserved niche market that, that we – we are working with these business owners deserve uh, our respect. They deserve our assistance. They have developed their business over a number of years and they need the help to transition. And that's small business owners as well as larger business owners. They built it from nothing and grew it into this really amazing business. And we're, we're again saying that this is an underserved niche market with minimal competition and a huge opportunity for growth, especially right now. Really? So let, let's talk about my favorite part, which is <laughs> income or revenue. Okay. So uh, as business brokers, uh, first choice, we generally charge between 12 and 15% of the sale or purchase price. In fact, some of our offices even charge as high as 20%. And we do have a minimum fee, which is $15,000 per transaction. So if we were selling a business, even um, as I was just talking to one of our agencies selling a nail salon, or excuse me, it's a hair salon for 39000 we have a minimum fee, believe it or not, of 15000 for that transaction. Yeah, and I mean, that's really on the, the very small side, and obviously we do much larger businesses, but we do such a variety of different industries and businesses. And to Jeff's point, talking about the revenue, we also have additional revenue streams. And one of the largest additional revenue streams that we like to talk about is when we refer buyers to our business acquisition lenders or SBA. Most of them are SBA lenders. We make a referral fee of 1% of the loan amount. So if that's a $600,000 loan, that's a $6,000 referral fee. If it's a $4 million loan, that's a $40,000 referral fee. So you can see how this can be uh, quite attractive in addition to our success fee that Jeff just talked about. So when you're talking about 15% of a $600,000 sale, that can be quite attractive, both from $90, a $90,000 yeah, $90, success yeah. fee plus a referral fee on top of that. So it can be quite nice. We also do earn uh, referral fees from uh, referring people for to transfer their retirement plan or their 401k plan. Uh, they can purchase their own business, and we uh, we do that quite often, and uh, we do get a referral fee for that one also. Yeah. So before we dive into all the Q&A, uh, I, I always like to take a moment to highlight some of our amazing support team here at First Choice. Um, this team along with the dedicated staff under them supporting them are essential to empowering our franchisees every day. And their commitment to your success is the backbone of First Choice. It's our culture. And their guidance and the guidance that you have from our success team is incredible. And you're not seeing the entire team here. We have deal structure associates. We have people that are, are with you every step of the way. Um, we're, in, we're just incredibly thankful to have this uh, talented group standing behind us for sure. So uh, next, I'm really excited to also introduce Grant Gooley. Uh, he obviously introduced himself at the start. He's not only a valued marketing partner, but he, as you know, is today's moderator. And Grant does bring an incredible amount of wealth and experience to the digital marketing uh, world out there. He has a proven track record helping businesses enhance their online presence. And that's actually how we met 
Grant and his team. He he did an amazing job, and we said, wow, we need some of this innovation in first choice. So with his innovative strategies and his marketing prowess, I would call it, uh, Grant has been really instrumental in driving some su- very, very successful campaigns for First Choice and continues to grow that. And he's going to share a little bit about some of the ways that he does this for our franchisees and their marketing. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Grant. Thanks so much for helping out today. (laughs) You bet. You bet. So, and thank you very much. So as some of you seen, I was the moderator and am the moderator today, um, but also uh, the founder of My Portal Marketing. Um, and I've got an MBA in consumer behavior and I've got two decades of experience in boardrooms and, and building marketing campaigns in B2B. So I'm always honored to be here and to be able to, to speak, um, about the marketing campaigns and the things we do for franchisees to help them, uh, buy and sell businesses and and grow their business. Um, it's really about authority. It's about being the go-to business broker, uh, just like in any in any business, you're here to solve problems. So our job as a marketing partner and a marketing, uh, and, and I say partner because we truly are, we're not a vendor. Uh, we partner with First yeah. Choice in a way that's, that's um, I'm going to say, much more instrumental, just like the word you use, than, than a vendor would. And so as a franchisee, you get access to our entire network, uh, which is we've got 50 employees at at, at my portal. And so you have an agency of record that you use from the day you begin straight through your your um, your experience with with first choice to to help buy and sell. And we're making you the authority, the go to business broker in your area. And we, we we've spent years studying the results and making sure that we're tweaking things and innovating things to be the best because people have choices. They can choose uh, 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 you know, multiple companies to, to buy and sell their business with, but first choice becomes the first choice because of our marketing. So um, I, I really feel strongly that, that we're here for franchisees at every step of the way. And, um, and, 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 you know, if you need that support, we're here and that's, what's critical as, as, as a partner. Thank you. So thanks, Jeff. Um, so the, the next thing, you know, we'll, we'll get right into it. I think what's important enough about me, let's, let's talk to the franchisee owners. Um, and that's what we're here to do today. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to start by, um, making an introduction. Um, we're going to hear today from Saba Safiari, who's an owner in California and Illinois, Uh, We're going to hear from Dr. Fernando Acosta, the business doctor. I have to say that you'll hear from from Fernando on that. He's an owner in Arizona and Texas. We're going to hear from AJ Kohler, uh, an owner in Nebraska. We're going to hear from Frank Nunziata, who's an owner in Ohio. And then we're going to hear from Scott Kranz, who's an owner in Minnesota, South Dakota, and most recently, Iowa. I have to say, um, this stuff is 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 works and, and goes really well if people are buying territories uh, consistently. So each of them are going to share their experiences and insights, and they'll also be available to answer any questions you may have throughout this session. So I'm really excited. Let's let's start. Let's jump right in. Saba, we're going to start with you. Please introduce yourself and, and start by talking to us about what, what drew you to First Choice Business Brokers. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Saba Safiari. Um little background. I was a Marine 20 years, um, really good transition into this opportunity. I uh, got an MBA and um, serial entrepreneur. And I found this to be a passion because as uh, somebody who deals with business brokers, I found there were some challenges there. And so I thought I'd put myself into uh, the point of friction uh, and become one. Uh, what really drew <laughs> me to this crew, uh, and at, right when I signed on today, I said that you know, everyone's smiling. I mean, th- th- this crew makes you feel good, uh, great teamwork. And I've been a franchisee and other things. And I can tell you, this is the best franchise I've ever been a part of. Thank oh, you, thanks. Saba. And yeah. thank you for your service. We got to get that in there. Thank you for your yes. service. <laughs> well said, Linda. Thank you. All right. So let's, let's move along. Let's, let's talk to Dr. Fernando Acosta, an owner in Arizona. Fernando, take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. So my wife and I, we left the corporate world uh, back in 2019, and we decided to join and start our journey with First Choice Business Brokers. And what really helped me decide this is the right path was all the systems and the information systems they have, the, the people, the process, and the technology. And that's really what stood out to us initially. 
but when we joined, we quickly realized that the the systems and the technology was just the small component of it. It's the people behind it. We gained, you know, mentors, coaches, teachers to really help hold our hands and guide us through that process to be able to help clients either buy or sell companies. And to us, that was the more, most valuable thing that really stood out to us. And, you know, that was when, when we closed our first deal that really you know, ignited some ideas for us. And we decided to open another location, one in Texas, and we're hoping to open another location in the near future. And, and just, it was truly life-changing. I, I I can't stress it enough that, you know, coming from that corporate world and the process-oriented side of it, I was working for a Fortune 500 company and just coming into to helping small business owners was really the, the, the energy and the passion that I knew that I had within me to go help small business owners. So, so with that said, Grant, I'll hand it back to you. Awesome. Thanks, Fernando. Very well said. Okay, we're going to we're going to move on to AJ Kohler, who's an owner in Nebraska. AJ, take it away. Hi, everybody. Uh, what drew me to First Choice? I think when I first came to First Choice, I was looking at different franchises, both in business brokerage and outside business brokerage, everything from running a staffing agency to a junk calling. I spent eight years in corporate America. I've run a small business myself. But I think that the first thing that drew me to business brokerage as a whole was, yes, you can have a junk calling business, but you don't make a huge impact in someone's life when you haul away their junk. Maybe a little bit. I some- <laughs> impact you have as a business broker to guide someone through one of the hugest transitions, selling their business, getting millions of dollars in the bank. It's a, it's a huge honor to make an impact with people. And I like the idea of doing big deals. It's exciting. If you can make a $100,000 commission or a $400,000 commission, that sounds really fun. Um, so that's, and then not having to manage a bunch of employees. A lot of other business opportunities, you have to have a 20 employees, 50 employees before you start making the kind of income that I was really excited by. Uh, and in this business, I'm you know, I can run it myself. I have an agent, I have one assistant, but it's, it's very tight knit group, a lot less headache. Um, so that was business brokerage, but specifically first choice, uh, honestly, number one, you have to look at who you are joining the business with and Linda and Jeff, I think if, if you get to know them, you'll find that they have just outstanding morals and ethics and leadership, and they really, really care. And Thank you. Yeah, of course. And I'm not just saying that. <laughs> That's very sweet. It all starts there with the leadership because if you have a person at the top that is going to do things the right way, they're going to bring on marketing agencies that are going to treat people right. They're going to bring on other franchisees that are great. So that's where I started. And then uh, next is, she's. I mean, there's an incredible team. You're joining a community. You're. That's honestly, I would have paid just to be part of this community because <laughs> Um, smart and honestly really fun. Uh, I was watching YouTube videos of like the conferences when I started and I thought like, Ooh, those people look like they're smart, but also fun. So uh, that has proven to be true, which is wonderful. And then uh, surprisingly, I was very impressed by the technology that First Choice has. I didn't expect with a 30 year company that they would be have as many automations. Uh, I was honestly very impressed with that. And um, the marketing, you know, you see Grant here on the call, and I don't think that as many franchises put the marketing and sales side and the collaboration on that as front and center. And that's what I wanted to buy into. I didn't want to come in and have to figure out what CRM am I going to use? Who am I going to do? Have do Facebook ads? How am I going to get this done? Well, I mean, there's, there's so many weeds you can get tangled in if you don't just have it all given to you. And so being able to have that in place, I was able to join and just like get going right away. Um, and to have that experience, I can call um, Freddie. There's mentors within the group. If I'm going to do anything, I have to be able to do it right. And um, I didn't want to get into something and not know what I was doing and not have the support. And I've always felt very supported. And there's, you know, someone that's been doing business brokerage for 40 years is just a phone call away, which um, is huge. That's awesome. AJ, thank you. So well said. However, before I move on, I I have to ask you a question because we've talked about this before in other scenarios and it kind of leans on how has first choice 
business brokers changed your life. And the first deal you did, can we talk a little bit in uh, numbers? I know let's not, to, you know, we won't toot too many horns, but this is an, I love this story. So if you could talk about it. <laughs> yeah, my, um, the first deal I closed was within the first year of business. It was for an urgent care and my commission check was, I think, 170,000 uh, just for that first deal. And my corporate salary was 120,000. <laughs> so just for your first deal, like cover that. And then, um, yeah, I've had the uh, highest income year of my life uh, this year. So that's- Yeah, AJ. That's fantastic. Thank fantastic. you. Thanks, thanks for sharing that information. All right. Thank you. We're, we're going to move on to Frank Nunziata, uh, somebody who I know very well. We've done a lot of work <laughs> together on, on the marketing side. And one of my favorite people. He's an owner in Ohio. Frank, over to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Enjoy today. Um, yeah, I'm the uh, office owner in Columbus, Ohio. My background, I'm an ex Waterhouse Coopers guy. Spent a lot of time in corporate America. Um, also, I, I owned and operated a lot of uh, both franchise and independent businesses. I think the uh, the path I've had to uh, first choice is a lot different, I think, than a lot of other people. Um, I've been a business broker for over 20 years, and I was an independent for 18 years. And prior to coming on board with First Choice, I looked at every other uh, business brokerage franchise opportunity out there. And really what drew me to First Choice mainly is the fact that other franchisors are just franchise companies, whereas First Choice, they own and operate a very successful office in, in Nevada. And that's that's the first thing that drew me to, to First Choice. Um, I wish I would have done it years and years ago, probably back when I first started 18, you know, 20 years ago. Um, the big difference with First Choice, too, is the training is second to none. Um, as an independent, when you bring people on board into your brokerage, you have to train them yourself. And there's really no way to train. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I should have turned this off before. Um, there's really no way to train people. Um, but with, with First Choice, you have a whole training model. And uh, people hit the ground running uh, after the training. And it means a lot. Uh, to AJ's point before, too. Um, again, I come at it from a different perspective. I've seen the independent side versus the franchise side. Um, AJ brought up a point that it's turnkey marketing. You, you don't have to create anything. As an independent, I had to create every single marketing piece that I had to generate. I had not only to create the content, I had to design it. And now it's plug and play, which is outstanding. It's absolutely outstanding. And as far as the support goes, um, Business brokerage is a very, very lonely business as an independent. And, you know, you're out there on your own. And being part of a national franchise, um, you have the support team. And then plus you have other people to talk to. People, if, you, if you're doing a, a particular transaction that you maybe haven't done before, you can just pick up the phone. And you, could, you could talk to someone. Um, so that, that's a, gr a great part of it, too. Um, it also provides a, um, a little bit of an exit strategy. When you're an independent and you think down the road, um, when you go to sell your business as an independent, you're not a brand. You're just an independent. And with a national brand behind you, there's a lot more to sell. Um, and it's also a very scalable business. You could get as large. Scott is multiple offices. You could be as large as you want or you could be as small as you want. You can make as much money as you want or as little money as you want. Hopefully it's more money than, than most. But, I mean, that, that's basically uh, my input with First Choice. Great. Thank you Thank so you, much, Frank. Frank. Thank you. Really appreciate that. All right. So we're going to move on to a, a, a multi-office uh, owner, Scott Kranz. Please take it away. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, Scott Kranz. I, uh, I came from the automotive background, uh, 25 years in the car business. And in that industry, I was a part of 14 uh, buy-sell transactions. So with a automotive dealership, you have a lot of moving parts, dealing with a, a franchise, obviously dealing, dealing with buyer, seller, lenders, a lot of things very similar to business brokering that you have to bring together. You got to wear multiple hats. So that was a lot of my history. Um, being in the car business, it's, uh, it's a grind 14 hours a day, day in, day out. And I knew uh, I have an 11 year old little girl and I knew I needed to get some flexibility to be a part of her life. So that's what drew me to business brokering. Um, I looked at other franchises within business brokering. 
But what drew me to first choice uh, simply, and I may sound like everybody else, but it was Jeff and Linda and the team. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What sealed it for me was just being able to visit with them and talk to them before I made the decision. And it wasn't a high pressure close. Um, they wanted me to make the right decision too. And it made me feel very comfortable. Um, the other thing is once I got into it, um, the training and the support staff, uh, Kayla, Melissa, Felicia, Howard, Grant, um, and so many more. Um, I mean, an example, I was having troubles with a deal that's actually going to close tomorrow. And I called the office and uh, talked to Freddie and Freddie kind of talked me off the ledge and <laughs> helped me take and actually helped me take the right approach with the seller to keep the deal together. And you don't have that with a lot of other franchises. Um, a lot of other franchises, you're on your own and you have to figure it out on your own. And if there's one thing I could say with this franchise, you're never gonna feel alone. Um, you always have someone that you can call. Um, you have an excellent library of tools. And the changes that I've seen just in the three years that I've been a team member are just, it, it's crazy. I mean, and I mean that in a, in a really, really good way. Jeff and Linda are working so hard every day to make things better for us as agents. And I really believe that. And I, and I tell people that, that they pour their heart and soul into making us better, not just themselves. So that goes a long way. Um, again, like I said, the biggest thing that drew me to first choice was Jeff and Linda, the team, the, the, the structure and the training. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Scott. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, so now that we've heard an introduction from, from the panelists and the franchisee owners, um, we've actually had some questions that were emailed into us um, from panelists. And, and, and for the panelists who are here today, I'd like you to take this opportunity to think of some questions that you may have from what you've heard so far and some things that, that you've been thinking about. And you can put them into the question and answer box at the bottom of the screen. Um, I believe there's a chat function there as well, but it's probably easier if we do it in the Q&A. Um, in the meantime, while you're writing your questions, we're going to uh, start with a few that were emailed into us. So Fernando, I'm actually going to start with you. Um, so Fernando, tell me what types of businesses you typically sell. So currently we have about six agents and two more in training. So my wife and I and business partner, we are industry agnostic. So we we take on any listing because at the end of the day, value in a business is the same regardless of the industry. Just you just have to tweak the multiple. However, some of our agents are specializing in different industries. We have one that is focusing more on auto shops, mechanic shops. We have another one that is trying to focus on medical practices. So, really, at at a high level, we're we're trying to keep it pretty open ended, and then let our agents specialize, and then we jump in and help them as we need to. Right, great, thank you. So, Frank, um, here's a question for you. How does FCBB compare to other competitors in the marketplace? I mean, you've been at this a long time. Uh, you've you've been in business brokerage for a while. How does First Choice come up against other competitors in the industry? Well, I mean, I think as a as a franchisee, again, when I was looking at joining First Choice, I looked at all the other competitors out there, and I think the mark difference is the fact that they're in the industry and. That's huge. It's huge. They know what you're going through on a day to day basis. They know what it's like to live in the trenches. And Linda is she's tireless. I mean, she she works constantly, always trying to develop new things and, and different systems and whatnot. Um, as far as uh, competition in the marketplace. Sure, there's going to be competition, but I love going up against there's a guy in town in Columbus. It's he's a Sunbelt. Uh, he's a Sunbelt business broker. And I love to I always ask a, a, a seller when they're interviewing me as a broker, because you have to you have to be interviewed because a uh, business brokerage, it's really you're a professional. But, uh, you know, we, we you have to have a relationship with the individual that you're selling the business for. But I love to go in right behind or even before the Sunbelt guide in the office. And we're just a lot different. We, we do things uh, very confidentially. Our marketing package that we put together that First Choice developed, 
um, is, I think, second to none. It helps on all ends of the business in terms of a transaction, I should say. Um, it helps getting financing in place because you can present that marketing package to a banker and they love when they get it because they see all the bells and whistles of the business. Um, it helps in selling the business because now you're you're presenting a nice, finished, clean package to a buyer. And a lot of the questions are already answered. Um, it's, it, it, you know, competition. I love competition. I'm a very competitive guy. And uh, going up against another franchise uh, doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Good stuff. And same on the marketing side, uh, Frank, we come up against a lot of competitors and yeah. we, we win on the technology. We yeah. win on user experience on web. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is one of my, a great question. I uh, came in from an email from an attendee. Uh, what are the qualifications, Linda, for this one's for you. What are the qualifications to become a broker? Sincerity. <laughs> I can't I can I can train people to do a lot of things I can train them on forms um, we love doing that we can train them on systems but we can't train them to care um, and uh, so I, I mean that's and I, probably Jeff will have a different answer and I'm, I'm sure mine seems very touchy-feely <laughs> but the reality of it is you are dealing with somebody's baby when you're talking to them about their business and if you go in there, guns a blazing, and I'm the best, and pounding my chest, and all of that, they want to they want to know which, how you're going to help them, and what it's going to feel like because they put everything into this business, and you can't do that without some sincerity, without actually caring about people. We have. Uh, agents from every walk of life. I mean, really, truly, we've had literally hostage negotiators, and they said this was much easier than that, um, right? Yeah. You know, we've had that. We've had um, psychologists, uh, if we, if obviously accounting, legal. We've had a lot of different backgrounds, but they share one thing in common, and they're good about speaking with, with individuals and, and having some empathy towards what they're going through and helping to consult them through a process instead of selling them. So, uh, and, and I do feel like that's a differentiator just about us as a company in general, and hopefully people can kind of feel that just hearing those that are on the call today nobody's coming at it, oh, pounding their chest about it. It's like, okay, what can we do to help people? How how they deserve the respect. And we are, as AJ put it, I couldn't have said it better. We are so honored to be part of business owners' journeys. It's, it, yeah. it is literally you could sit at a closing table and sit next to a seller and have tears in your eyes because they're so excited, but they're also, you know, tears of gratitude and also tears of joy, but also <gasps> – you know, I've sold my business. I've been doing this for 30 years. What do I do tomorrow? Kind of a thing. So it's a, okay. yeah. Self, self transcendence and, and doing something bigger than yourself and business brokerage. You have so many opportunities to impact uh. so many people. And that's one of my favorite things about even doing the marketing for business brokers. Right. So um, Scott Kranz, I have to uh, bring this one to you. This is a, an email from an attendee. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced as a franchisee and how did you overcome them and become so successful with the, with multiple locations like you have? Well, I, I've always, uh, I think I've always told Melissa and I mentioned it to Jeff and Linda at convention one year, I could teach the class of what not to do when you first start. Um, <laughs> so the, the first thing you, you need to do and, and uh, how to overcome the challenges is really uh, do the training and listen to the training because a lot of the training will give you the foundation to develop your business. Um, the biggest thing for me, once I slowed down and quit worrying about necessarily trying to add agents right away, but to build my business and my listings, get the listings and how I go about that. And it, it works for me is I cold call. I cold call 20 to 40 business owners a day and offer the market price evaluation. And then that way I'm building listings. And then as I've added agents, I have listings available for them that I switch over to them so that they can start making some money right away. So I guess in short, the challenge I had for me was not listening, thinking I maybe had a better way. <laughs> and in reality, uh, they talk about it in the training. It's direct mail. Um, I did a direct mail piece, and one of my first large deals um, came from that. 
And it was a garbage company in South Dakota and sale price was close to 3 million. And that came off a direct mail piece, one out of a thousand, you know, and then cold calling uh, the 20 to 40 a day, I get about a 10% contact rate and follow up rate on that. So then that way you have some runway. If you want to add people and grow your office, you've got things for them to, to do, to start to make some money. So great. Thanks, Scott. And for the attendees, when you hear somebody talk about a $3 million deal, we've got average commissions and they're in the 15% range. So you could do some quick math. It's pretty amazing um, uh, at, at the opportunity. I have to put that in there. Okay, so we've got a great question here from David Gonzalez, one of the attendees. Um, are the opportunities with FCBB best for those that can work full time or can a new agent do this part time? I'd like to put this over to serial entrepreneur Saba please. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think there's a balance, um, David. Uh, and I think that um, it, it depends on whether or not somebody wants to make this a full-time gig. What I'll tell you is uh, there's some runway, right? Um, although Grant does a phenomenal job getting leads, which I've been extremely happy about <laughs> in the two locations that I'm at. Uh, I can tell you that no matter what, you have to call them Right. Scott's talking, you got to work through the angles. You got to make sure that it's a good fit both ways. And through that process, that might take, let's say, a few months. Right. So you have to balance that out between what you have in terms of life responsibilities uh, and where you can go. I can tell you that as somebody who is a serial entrepreneur, um, this is my highest priority. Um, I'm putting in the necessary hours and having the right team, my team to support me in addition to FCBB supporting me, which allows me to not need to put in 100 hours a week, if you will, as a traditional uh, entrepreneur. So I think to kind of summarize that um, you can be part time, we shoot for 20 hours a week minimum for the broker agents. But if you want to be somebody who's going to scale uh, and be successful, I think that being full time should be your goal, while understanding that you can manage this part time as well. Great. Thank you so much, Saba. Um, so uh, another question here, um, this one's going to go to Jeff Nyman. Um, we we all understand that the, the economy can affect so many businesses in so many different ways. How does the economy affect business brokerage, Jeff? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to just uh, add on to what uh, Saba had said, sure. and that is that uh, you know, we've had many franchisees over the, these years who've come in on a part-time basis. And then as they have built up uh, income, which is the primary thing they need, in the, especially in the beginning, they then have turned it into full time. And actually, that happens with uh, agents that you hire also. Uh, we had one lady who was working three jobs and first choice uh, when she became an agent with first choice. Eleven years later, she came in and says, I'm going to retire. I've made enough money in these 11 years. But she started off, when she came to us, she was working at the counter at May Company or Macy's. But anyway... So how does the economy affect business brokerage? Well, really, it doesn't. And I know that's easy to say, but uh, during the recession, we still sold businesses. People still wanted to sell. Others wanted to buy. Yes, we, we had to make some pretty good deals for buyers, but uh, we were selling the pizza restaurants and all sorts of businesses at much lower prices. We still did, did okay. COVID was one, was at that point was our best year ever. Unbelievable. Um, it's still it's been uh, increased uh, and uh, past that, but uh, 2020 was our best year, and that was crazy. But so really, business brokerage doesn't fluctuate the way that the uh, like, for example, real estate does. Oh, the economy is bad. Okay, real estate goes down. Real estate goes down. We stay level. Real estate goes crazy. We stay level. So really, it doesn't really have that much of an effect. And what is amazing uh, right now is the fact that uh, our lenders are pushing, 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 even with the rates that they're charging uh, to uh, for us to send them business. They're very highly competitive. And, uh, you know, they're increasing. The, uh, we talked about a 1%, some are off in 2% in order for us to get their business. And uh, so bottom line is... They don't make the economy, money if they don't lend, right? <laughs> that's right. The, the economy is not really, it really doesn't have any effect on us. It really doesn't. That's great. 
Thank you, Jeff. Great answer. Um, so one of the uh, attendees had emailed in about marketing strategies. That's so important because to get the, the ground, to get, you know, get things rolling, it's important that you've got a great strategy in place. So I'm, I'll take that one. Um, so at, at, at First Choice Business Brokers, we've We've got um, a multitude of strategies. I call it a cross-channel approach. At the end of the day, we have to be the authority because people need to trust you to buy and sell businesses with you, right? So um, when we talk about building authority, we need to be educational by nature. We need to get in front of people and say, we're here to help you if you'd like to sell your business. So how do we do that? What's my point? Uh, on meta ads, which is Facebook and Instagram, which is social ads, advertising, and Google ads is a great way at a really uh, affordable rate to get out in front of people uh, and to let them know that you're a business broker and you can help them. And we do that in the Kickstart program right off the hop when you're when you're joining First Choice Business Brokers. We get you out in front of people, get leads right away so that you hit the road running. The other way is through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a business network that has millions of, of business owners. We actually have a process where we connect you with people uh, through LinkedIn and actually start making sure that they understand you're a business broker and then provide valuable resources through white papers and videos and eBooks to make sure that people understand that you are the business broker for them and to allow them to come back to you and say, hey, I am interested in selling my business. Can we talk? These uh, strategies have been extremely successful across the board. We do webinars. Um, we're constantly getting on calls and talking about the search engine optimization strategy, your website, making sure that the user experience on the website is mobile friendly, all the most important things that we need to do digitally. And then also, let's not forget print. Uh, we make sure that, that you've got opportunities to send out postcards and, and, and print pieces to businesses around you. I have to say that First Choice Business Brokers puts an extreme amount of attention into marketing and sales. And that's how you're going to make sure that you're successful in this business. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, uh, because I'm the moderator, I'm going to keep it going. Uh, AJ. Uh, this one's for you. It was another email uh, that had come in with a question from an attendee. What is the most interesting listing that is closed for you? Uh, good question. I'm right now. I'm selling an indoor uh, shooting range, <laughs> and that's <laughs> uh, interesting. People I've been getting to work with. Um, yeah, I just went under contract today, actually, for five hundred fifty thousand. So good for the seller. Um, but I've honestly enjoyed all of them. I personally, I like seeing the behind the scenes of a lot of different types of businesses and getting to look at people's financials and understand in depth how a lot of different businesses work. So I've sold everything. Um, I mentioned the urgent care. That was my first sale, lawn care, um, daycares. Um, yeah, it, it's really pretty varied, to be honest. Marketing agency, tried to sell that to Grant, he didn't want to buy it, but <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, so lots of, I think the diversity is what's interesting about um, getting to, to do this business. Yeah, great. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, we've got another one here. Fernando, how do you stay connected with other franchisees and what role does that community play in your success? So we're looking at our stats uh, for this year as to the deals that we closed and all the listings that we got. And based on our stats across the two offices, we found out that 44% of the listings that we received were referrals from other offices. So to us, having that network across you know the, the whole United States is very important. We, we sometimes get leads in, in areas that we, we, we don't have an office, so we refer it to another franchisee and vice versa. So, you know, at the end of the day, Referrals uh, are a little bit easier to to get the listings just because it's a trust factor when somebody vouches for you and saying this person can help you. So so for me that that community and that you know being able to pick up the phone and talk to any franchisee is very helpful to making sure that we're successful and you know it's it's we're we're elevating the tide together if you will. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm also very included, Fernando, of course, in, in a lot of the networks. And it's amazing how people come together as, as a group um, to, to answer questions and, and to work together to, to win on deals um, and, and help uh, facilitate a process for the, the seller and the buyer that's going to make their lives better. And people come together and share that information. It's wide open. And, and that's amazing. Um, so actually, this one's for Frank. Um, again, from an attend attendee, what are some potential revenue streams? 
Um, there's a whole source. I mean, obviously, the biggest revenue stream that's going to come in is a close in the transaction because that's the largest piece of the deal. But um, you can actually um, you can actually do business valuations. Uh, I'll tell you a very quick story. A guy that uh, just started working with me. Um, it was a, a, a to get back to the referral thing. Referrals are the best. That's the best marketing. You, can, you don't have to do marketing. They, yeah. You know, after years of being in business, you get a lot of referrals. But uh, a, a gentleman that just started working for me in the office. Um, somebody called me up. I had sold a, a business that they owned previously. They have another business they wanted to sell. So they called me up and they were on the fence. They said they had a buyer um, in place and they just didn't know what to charge the buyer. What What is their business worth? So uh, I said, I offered to do a business valuation. Um, I didn't charge a boatload of money. I, I told them I, I'll do a business valuation for $5,000. I flipped it over to uh, the person in my office, his name is Steve McConaughey, uh, that just started. And I said, Steve, do the business valuation. And let's, if we play our cards right, um, this is probably what's going to happen. Because a lot of times when sellers have people they think are going to buy their business, nine times out of 10, they don't buy the business. Number one, they're not qualified. Number two, they're just scared. Um, so the chance of the guy buying the business is probably slim to none. So I said to Steve, let's, let's get in there. We'll do the business valuation. Um, she doesn't have a marketing package put together at all. So offer to do the marketing package for her. We'll charge her some more money. And charge it a, a couple of thousand more to do a marketing package. And then um, I said, Steve, chances are she's not going to sell the business to this person. You may get a listing out of it. Well, sure enough, we wound up getting a listing out of it. I forgot your original question, but um, <laughs> that's well, just popped a great into my story. Mind. Great story. <laughs> Thanks, I bet they like the story better than the question. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the other revenue streams. I mean, obviously, uh, Jeff touched on this before. Uh, Linda touched on it. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to get money on the loan side if you're working with different bankers. Different bankers will give you different percentages and stuff like that. So that's a small piece of it. The yeah. biggest success fee is selling the person's business. And I, I tell you one thing. I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, it's not about the money. Um, to the point that uh, Linda made before, It's this is a relationship business that we're in. And the biggest, after doing this for 20 years, the biggest jazz in life that I get now is not necessarily the money. It's working with the business owner. I did it last year, a business owner. She started the business, a woman. She was 74 years old. She started a printing company 35 years ago, and she was ready to retire. Now, she worked her entire life pouring her heart and soul into this business, and she wanted to retire. The joy I got it out of selling that business for her, it's second to none. I remember uh, even the, the first time business owners that bought the business, they were all jazzed up too. Um, I went to the closing. I, I brought a couple of bottles of wine. I bought one, uh, two bottles for the uh, the seller, a bottle for the, the buyers. And, uh, you know, when the buyers are ready to sell, I guarantee you they're going to call me up. Yeah. But, you know, it's a great business. Great business. All right. Thank you. Oh, good. That's excellent. We have a, we have another question from an attendee or, or to comment with a bit of a question. I hate to call, this is what it says. I hate to cold call or walk into businesses. Um, and I do belong to these business networks, but I'm looking for a digital solution for lead generation. And uh, Sarkis, you couldn't have said that any better because that's exactly how many how many bro brokers feel. And we use what's called disruptional marketing through meta ads. That's exactly that strategy is to get out in front of people through meta. So you don't have to make those cold calls. People opt in and put their hand up and say, hey, I, I'd like a, a, an analysis on my business, a market price analysis. Tell me how much my business is worth. And, and let's start talking about my exit strategy. So they're coming to you. Right. Um, that is the goal with Kickstart. That's the goal when you get involved with choice business brokers is to have that that set up for you right away when you join. OK, so another one was um, and, and Jeff, I think this would be a great question for you about some of the large metropolitan areas. This is from an attendee. There's according to this attendee feels that they're saturated with agents. Um, is is there room for growth uh, being in Los Angeles or in some of these other more saturated areas? Um, and, and how to establish the FCBB brand, which I can talk about this, but maybe talk about the saturation, Jeff, and what are your thoughts there in business brokerage? Remember this, that's uh, what we start off in, uh, to begin with. There are only 4,000 business brokers. Sounds like a lot. Believe it or not, the majority of business brokers are in Florida and Arizona. That's where the majority are. And um, so as far as uh, in the LA area, boy, it's, um, I mean, we have um, the daughter of one of our agents in Las Vegas who's been with us 27, 28 years. And she and her partner have an office in the LA area. 
they really can't even handle what's uh, coming into them. <laughs> so there's no saturation. That's a big market. It's, yeah, it's... we're huge. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're talking 4,000 across the entire country with the bulk of them being in Florida. So, and I think it's uh, important to note, too, that, you know, if you feel when you talk about saturation, you know, some people may say, I do this part of the business or that part of the business. Full-time business brokers, ultimately, you know, earlier Saba was talking about, you know, how somebody can start out and transition – Sellers and buyers want to work with full-time business brokers, not people that are dabbling in business brokerage. And, you know, that, that, that doesn't help anybody. That really doesn't help anybody. And what sets you apart from all of these people is our training systems and support. So for you, that systems and support side of it and, and having deal structure and correct packages and all of that – the competition can, like Frank was saying, the competition can actually be helpful. Let them yeah. educate potential sellers for you, and then you can go in and shine because that's that's really what's going to end up happening. You know, you go in with an educated, uh, proper method of valuing their business, presenting it to them, having a good package, being able to help qualify and bring in buyers. It's a whole different thing. The way we describe what First Choice brings to the table when we're working with sellers blows everybody else out. I, I uh, You know, that question came in, I think, from someone from California. California mm -hmm. is a licensed state. Yeah. And um, you do get uh, the occasional uh, real estate agent who sells a business, but they're not really full time. But, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's funny. It's not the kind of business where you compare to real estate where the homeowner says, oh, I want to talk to five agents. I hate to say it, sometimes they say, well, good luck with that, because there just aren't that many uh, business brokers in the entire country. They really aren't. So it's not a highly competitive factor, quite the opposite. I say it's an, an almost a non-competitive type of business. Great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, Linda, I actually have a question for you here. Um, can we talk a bit about how we get to that 12 to 15% commission? What What is it that, that kind of allows for that? Like, does that set us apart to yeah. achieve that? Or, achieve or that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so really, you have to separate yourself. If you're thinking the parallel between real estate and business brokerage, you need to separate yourself out there. I know some agents, and I'm just going to throw out some things that agents have said along the years. Think of think of it more as being an attorney on on a, a contingency, right? They, they're they making a 30, 33% fee, right? When, when they close their transaction, we'll call it that. Some some brokers will actually make that analogy and help sellers to understand. But most of the time, if the seller is feeling like, oh, that that's higher than I thought it would be, that's because they're comparing you to real estate. So then when you go in and you're explaining what it is you do as a business broker, we value your business. Valuing your business means we're looking at tax returns and P&Ls. It's not like it's a house next door to another house. It just doesn't – you could put two businesses right next door to each other that are dry cleaners, and they can have completely different incomes even though they're in the same square footage, et cetera, you know, same employee count, all of that. So it's – it's very different to go in and value a business. And again, we have the proprietary system to do that. But when you're explaining that to a seller and helping them to understand that and that we we will create business uh, presentation packages on your business and we're going to have different levels of packages based on where a buyer is in the process. I don't know of any other brokerage that does anything like that. They just don't. We ask for proof of funds from buyers so that we know that, hey, this is somebody that now we can say, hey, seller, this is a good time for you to step in. I've introduced your business. We've gone through this process. We work with immigration attorneys who bring in great buyers. And and we work with rollover companies that will work with those buyers that are working with their retirement funds that want to roll them over tax-free. We introduce them to lenders that are the appropriate lenders, the type, appropriate type of lenders that do business acquisition loans. We literally have two full pages of what First Choice brings to the table. I'm just throwing some of them out at you right now. Once you go through all of that and you explain and you do a market price analysis with the seller, they don't question what you're charging. Yeah. And and they just don't. But I'm, I'm, you can't go sorry, in with Linda. your tail between your legs. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> Linda, I just add that um, sellers are not – they don't really care what your fee is. All they care about is how much money am I going to receive when the business is sold. They don't care what your fee is. Your fee could be 40%. 
They don't care. If the number that they're looking for sounds right, that's all they care about. And AJ, and I think, what, was going to say something, yeah. too. Yeah, I, w- I would say that on the fee, it is up to your office, too. Well, oh, that's true, so, too. And that's the thing. Some franchises are very restrictive in how you need to run your business, and First Choice is not like that. Uh, the deal that I did for $4.2 million, I did it at a 9% commission, which I know maybe in five years I won't. Maybe I'd have more comments, <laughs> right? But that was still um, $380,000 in my pocket plus the $40,000 the bank paid me. And I was plenty happy with that. Um, that 9% is the lowest that I will go. But I would say like it's up to you. So mostly I'm doing 12 and a half, 15%, but you have that flexibility if you want to to adjust. So I want yeah, I want to worry about that, I guess. Great. Excellent. Well, um, we're just, Linda, if you could please pull up the map, um, I'm going to answer one last question here um, and please pipe in anybody if you have a, a thought on this, but about penetrating into the market quickly um, and establishing your brand as first choice business brokers. Um, I have to say with multiple decades of experience in business brokers, being a part of first choice business brokers, you get to use a brand that's been around, right? Um, there's, there's, there's no reason why when you put that on your front door, or you put that on your digital doorstep that that people don't say, okay, well, I'm going to work with this with this person because they've been around so long, their systems processes, they've got the proven track record. So when you're penetrating, you need authority. That I keep saying that that's the word of the day today for me. Um, it's also getting in front of people, like I said earlier, with disruption marketing and making sure that that hits from the day that you become a franchisee. And I have to say that is the first choice way. It is the quick, the quickest way we can get you up in front, trained and out in front of people to penetrate with the first choice brand that's been around for so long. Um, AJ, do you have anything to say about penetrate? Because you had an extremely successful um, early start. Um, I think jumping into the market, I would echo, I think, I can't remember who said it, but if you just look at biz by sell and try to call and get in touch with some business brokers, you'll see how poor the competition is. Um, you won't get any information on the business. You won't get calls back. It's, I, I would say that if you are just a professional and you're responsive and you follow the training, I think that you will be blown away by the success you can have in this business. Thank you, AJ. Well said. And uh, we've got one more minute to go to the map, but I have to ask this. Um, the agent retention rate, it just came up as an attendee question. And, and Linda, I know you usually love to to, to talk about it, but, but the, the offices, how, how long do people stick around? <laughs> if, if an agent is coming in to first choice, um, and I will say this, it's almost like for Jeff, nails on a chalkboard when somebody says, oh, I'm just going to try it out. I'm going to dip my toe in it. He thinks, oh, no, you know, you need to jump in. Right. And we do when somebody joins and they they go through the training and they take it very seriously. When when people go through training, they have to do four market price analysis, fill in a listing agreement kit, which is a longer kit, and fill in an asset purchase agreement, all based on case studies, real tax returns, real p and They go through this and they take it seriously. They get out there literally on their last day. They're saying, you know what? I actually feel like I can go out there and do this today. I feel really confident. Those people are the ones that, get out and they get it done. AJ being one of those people, they take it seriously. They don't look at it and say, oh, well, I'll just put a half, you know, a halfway attempt at this and, and we'll review it later. No, they take it really seriously and they do it. In Las Vegas, 28 years, 29 years, 20 years, 25 years, we have agents here that have now offices in other states. I, I mean, Wow. Yeah. And most of the people, it's like their fa- their family. They've been with yeah. us so long. <laughs> that, that is that is a true testament to the first choice business brokers <laughs> values and morals. If you keep, you know, agents and offices around for 28 years. OK, we have to we've got 30 seconds. And as you can see on this map that you're looking at here on the screen, first choice business brokers. It's been growing rapidly with 107 territories already sold across the country. And this growth reflects the strong demand for the services, but the trust that business owners place in First Choice. Uh, currently, there are key territories available right now, um, but they're filling up quickly. So 
you got to partner with us now if you want this opportunity to secure these prime locations and join this network that you just heard firsthand that's making a real impact on not only their own lives, but other business people's lives around uh, the US. And as we wrap up today's webinar, we want to invite you to set an appointment with Melissa um, as soon as you can to explore these available territories near you and discuss how this opportunity could seriously launch your career uh, in business brokerage. Uh, and we're going to email you her calendar link. We'll email you Melissa's calendar link along with the recording of this webinar. Uh, and thank you so much to the panelists that joined. Thank you so much thank for you. taking your time um, you know, to be here. And thank you to all the attendees for your questions. Um, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. Uh, hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you.